Hey there, this is Umesh from Pixel Perfect and today let's go ahead and start with a trick. But before that, why do we need to use a smart object? For non-destructive editing. Now what really is non-destructive editing? Hold that thought, we'll get back to that after the trick. Back to the trick. So here we are in Lightroom and you be assured that this is a Photoshop tutorial and it will all make sense later. And we have made some changes to the image. We have decreased the highlights, decreased the shadows a little bit, increased the clarity and the dehaze. Now let's have a look at the before. So here is the before. There's this distracting pole that we removed and we recovered the highlights, right? Little adjustments here and there. Now. If you want to further edit it inside of Photoshop, what do we usually do? We right click on it and we go to edit in Adobe Photoshop CC 2018 or whatever version you're on. Now, instead of doing that, if we go ahead and click on open as smart object in Photoshop, have a look what happens. Okay. Now it's opening processing in Photoshop. I hope I clicked that properly. Did I? I think I did. Let's go back to Photoshop and let's see whether the image has been loaded. So the image has been loaded inside of Photoshop. Have a look. Now, instead of a background layer, it has been loaded as a smart object. And the way we can tell that is by looking at the symbol right over there. Have a look at this symbol. It tells you that this is a smart object. Now, have a look at this. If I double click on the thumbnail right here, look what happens. Camera Raw opens up. Now inside of Camera Raw, all the same settings that we did in Lightroom shows up. We decrease the highlights, we decrease the shadows, the white balance information, everything is right there. Now also, if you go back to the spot removal tool, this one is still there. So if I decrease the opacity, have a look. I mean, you can get it back if you want to, but we don't want to get it back. Just wanted to show this to you. Everything that we did in Lightroom is there. So Lightroom's develop module and camera raw, it's both are very identical. Okay, so I'm gonna hit cancel. So you can make any changes you want. So you can add adjustments, do whatever you want. Maybe we added a curves adjustment layer and gave it some mood and maybe we added a gradient map. So you can do whatever you want, a little bit of black and white feel to it, decrease the opacity. Now it's totally upon you, we are doing some random stuff. And anytime you wanna go back, all you have to do, double click on it. And for example, you want to do adjust the clarity, you can do that. For example, you wanted to increase it, hit okay. And it makes those adjustments and it just boom, kaboom. It just makes some changes to your images that you always wanted. So pretty cool, isn't it? So you can open raw files as smart objects from Lightroom and also from inside of Photoshop. Let me tell you how. So if I just close it, don't save, okay? So let's go back to Lightroom and we'll just locate the photo. So here we have Lightroom and we're gonna locate that photo. So right click on it and um, show in Finder and this is not necessary for you. So here is the photo. If I directly open that up inside of Photoshop, drag it, and drop it inside of Photoshop. So it's gonna open up in Adobe Camera Raw. Now you make the adjustments that you want, probably decrease the exposure, maybe decrease the highlights and all that kind of stuff. Now, instead of clicking at open image, we hold the shift key. Now when we hold the shift key, have a look at the button. The button changes to open object. Have a look, it changes to open object when we hold the shift key. So you can hold the shift key and click on open object or you can click here and check open in Photoshop as smart object, hit okay. It does the same thing, open object. And then when you hold the shift key, it does just the opposite, it shows you open image. So I usually keep it checked off and then when I want to open it as a smart object, I hold the shift key and click on open object. It does the exact same thing. If you are not using Lightroom, all you have to do, if you double click on it, the same settings will show up. Isn't that awesome, right? So anytime you wanna make any changes, very easy to do, just open as smart objects. So we can say that smart objects are smart, but in what other ways? And to understand the concept, let's peek into the pixels. Have a look at this photo, can you see something? There is actually something, let's zoom in, okay. So imagine you have an image with nine pixels and that's exactly what it is there, all right? So have a look, three by three pixels. 3 into 3, 9. So you have an image with 9 pixels and all of the pixels have different colors, okay? Totally different colors. So I have made that image for you. Just 9 pixels, all the pixels having different colors. Now, I have one smart object of the same thing and I have one, the regular raster layer. So first of all, let's work on the smart object. Turn it off, let's open up the smart object. If I press Control or Command T, okay? for the transformation tool. And then we make it smaller to four pixels. Have a look what happens. So the color mixes and matches and you know, it, it just makes it smaller. And 
What happened to one, two, three, four, five pixels right there, which were there? Well, they are actually still there, reserved. They didn't delete it, it is just hidden. Press Ctrl or Command T and let's make it big again. The exact same thing shows up, but it's not the case with raster, right? So if I just go ahead and turn off the smart object and turn on the raster regularly, this is not a smart object and this one is. All right, press Ctrl or Command T. If I make it smaller, hit enter. It's the exact same thing that appeared with the smart object. However, in this case, what happened to those five pixels? They are deleted. That information is totally deleted. Now, before we make it big, Let's make a copy of it. It will make more sense to you. Keep in mind that this is a raster layer. Let's make a copy. Press Ctrl or Command J. Okay. Now, if we make it big, press Ctrl or Command T and make it big. Hit Enter. We do not get the exact same thing. What happens is all those five pixels were deleted. Unlike in Smart Object where all the five pixels were kept in reserve. So Smart Object keeps it. Even if you make it smaller, it just keeps it, doesn't show it to you. Well, raster layer, if you make it smaller, it just deletes it. It's, it's careless, right? So have a look at what it did. And this is important lesson for all of us. Okay, so this was small one and we made it big. So it didn't invent any details. So have a look at this pixel right there. When it was small, it's the same color. When you made it big, it's the same color. Now, this pixel, Okay, this skin color type pixel, when we made it bigger, this pixel moved over there. Okay, and what happened to this pixel? This pixel moved over here. And what happened to the middle pixel? The middle pixel moved to the corner. And these pixels are just average of the surrounding pixels. Have a look at this for an example. So the average of this and this pixel is here right in the middle as this one moved over there. So when this one moved over there, we have the average of this one and this one in the middle. And we have the average of this one and this one in the middle. This one is the average of the surroundings. So that's how it duplicates and kind of tries to like fake the details, but they cannot get back the details. So that's the difference between smart object and regular raster layers. Let me give you some real world examples so that it starts making sense to you. Here we have a beautiful lady and we have the subject layer. All right, so let's zoom out quite a bit. Let's make a copy of the subject layer. Press Ctrl or Command J and convert this into a smart object. And to do that, we can right click on it and choose convert to smart object. Or you can also do the same thing by going to filter, convert for smart filters. It's already converted. That's why it's grayed out. Okay, now, Let's make the canvas a little bit bigger. Press C for the crop tool and we're gonna just make it bigger. We're gonna clear it up and let's just make it bigger. Just like this, okay? Hit enter or return. Okay, now let's bring the smart object. Now keep in mind that this is a smart object with a big M, <laughs> all right? So let's bring it right here. The right side is the smart object and the left side is the regular last raster layer. All right, now, if we select both of them, press Ctrl or Command T, okay? And we make both of them smaller, just like this. Keep in mind, the regular raster layer deletes the information when you don't need it. So when you make it big again, it doesn't have any information, but the smart object keeps stuff in reserve. Okay, now both look pixelated, but wait till you commit the changes. Hit return or enter. Have a look at it. Have a close look at it. So this was the regular raster layer and this was the smart object. It retained the details. Now, here's one more important thing that we need to consider. When you make the smart object smaller, press Ctrl or Command T and let's make it smaller, okay? Have a look at the top. Have a look at the width and the height. It shows you 40%, okay? It means that right now the smart object is 40% of its original size, okay? If you make it smaller, it will show you it's 25% of its original size. However, if you make it bigger than the image actually is, it will show you it's 162%. 
Now, if you make it huge, it doesn't mean that it will just invent the details. No, it will only show up the details to an extent of how large the image actually is. It will not invent any extra pixels. So right now, it is getting pixelated, of course it will, because the image is not large enough, the original image, all right? So if you press Control or Command T, have a look, it's 500% of its size. Whenever it goes beyond 100%, you will begin to lose quality. All right, keep that in mind. Let's talk about something interesting. Let's talk about composites. Have a look at this composite. So here we have an image. And by the way, do you remember this photo from the hair selection tutorial? It's the same one. So this is the before, and this one is the after. So here's the new background that we just made and we cut out the subject and placed it above the background. So this is the subject and we made some adjustments to the subject to make it match with that of the background. Now, the background is pretty crowded and we wanna blur the background. So right now the background is a regular raster layer. Now say we go to filter, blur gallery and let's say tilt shift. Now the tilt shift blur is gonna show up. Let's zoom out quite a bit and we're gonna apply the blur according to the image and it blurs slowly and gradually and let's increase the blur. And if you wanna know more about that blur, check out the video right here. Okay, so background blur. I guess I like, let's zoom in and see how it's looking. It's looking pretty darn um, too much blurry. Let's go ahead and go for 50. House 50 pixels, that looks much more realistic and and I'm happy with this. Now, since it's also blurring along the walls, we have to maintain the perspective as well. We cannot blur it in a plane. We have to keep in consideration the walls as well. So we make one more point over there and we rotate it, okay? Just like this. And we move it right there. And we do the same thing. 50 there as well, 50 here as well. We rotate it, we move it there, and we do something like this. Okay, this looks pretty realistic and I love it. And I'm gonna hit okay. All right, so it's gonna process and it's gonna take a while because this is a heavy filter. But here's an essential thing to learn for all of us. Have a look at what it did with the photo. It blurred it, it looks fine, it looks amazing. Now, what if you wanna change the blur? Well, we cannot really do this right now. We have actually cooked it to the image. This area is a little bit too sharp. This area as well, we need to adjust that, but we can't do anything. We have to go back and start all over again. So instead of doing that on a regular layer, let's go back. Let's convert it into a smart object. Now, this time, let's do it this way. Go to filter, convert for smart filters. Hit okay. All right, it's gonna take a while. Now, this is a smart object. Now watch, if I go to filter, and if I apply the blur gallery again, it's already there, okay? Because we applied it previously, it will apply the same settings right here. Okay, so we have all the three points. Okay, now if I want to increase it from here, I can do that. Let's keep it 50. And this time, let's move it a little bit to the right, okay? Do the same with this one, move it a little bit to the left. Okay, I'm happy with this, and probably I'll select that and go 60. Okay, and then hit OK. Now it's gonna take a while again, but have a look at the magic, have a look at whatever happens. Whenever you add an adjustment or a filter to a smart object, it's gonna add it as a smart filter. So have a look. If you click on that arrow, it shows up as smart filters. And if you double click on the blur gallery, all the same settings show up. You can move it the way you want it. You can make changes to the values. It's gonna be amazing. Just hit okay. Even if you apply regular adjustments like curves or hue saturation, it works there as well. Have a look. If you go to image adjustments and then let's say curves and let's increase the contrast a little bit. Just like so. And this is just for showing you. And if you hit okay, have a look. Curves has been added here as well. And you can turn it off. You can also Turn it on if you want to. It's gonna take a while because it's again gonna render the blur gallery and then the curves. Yes, it's a little bit slow because this is a humongous huge image. Have a look at the size. But if you turn it on, it gives you the power of non-destruction. Okay, whatever you call it. With the blur, the shallow depth of field looks so much more better. Now, speaking of composites, have a look at the composite again. What if you went ahead and added a couple more adjustment layers like curves and probably changed the background a little bit and did some changes, maybe added a little bit yellow to the shadows, 
went to the blues and decreased the blues in the shadows just a little bit, maybe increased the blues in the highlights and made a couple of changes here and there. Maybe you added a hue saturation adjustment layer. Let's go ahead and add a hue saturation adjustment layer just above the background and you tried to decrease it or increase the saturation a little bit, just a little bit. Okay, and this is something I'm doing just for showing you something. All right, you did that. And inside of that mask, I think this area is getting a little too saturated. So I'll take a brush and probably paint that area in black. Or maybe let's go ahead and create one more hue saturation adjustment layer. And maybe let's decrease the saturation of a couple areas which are distracting. Okay, now inside of that mask, press Ctrl or Command I with the mask selected. With the brush, with the foreground color white and just paint on this area. Make sure the flow is 100% and then we're going to just make it black and white. And you made a couple of adjustments just for the background and we have already made some adjustments for the subject. Now this can get a little messy. What if you want to keep it non-destructive at the same time? You want just one layer and you don't want to merge it. Here's what you can do. Smart objects have an amazing feature of grouping. Have a look at this. If I select all the layers which relates to the background, all the layers which comprise the background. So the new background is selected, hold the shift key, click on the topmost layer which comprises the background, which is a part of the background. Okay, so these are the four layers for the background. Now if we right click on it and click convert to smart object, have a look what happens. All of them will combine together to become just one layer. And even with the subject, we have this one as a subject and we have this one as a subject, this one as a subject as well. So we select all three of them, right click on it and convert to smart object. Now all of them are subjects. Now you can name it subject and you can name this background. New background, it's actually new BG. All right, cool. Now you might be thinking, what if I wanna make a change to the curves adjustment layer? We can, if you double click on the thumbnail, another document opens up and that document has everything that we grouped. Have a look. We have the curves, we have the subject layer with every detail inside of it. It's just like another Photoshop document. Same, let's click on don't save. Same with the new BG. If, if I just double click on the thumbnail, another document just shows up. Okay, so if I want to make any change, for example, you just opened up, let's say, curves and let's make a drastic change right here. And if I just make the shadows very light, made it crazy. And if I save it, if I just collapse it, press Ctrl or Command S, or you can also go to File and then save It's the same thing. It's saving right now. Okay, now if you go to File and then save, it will do the same thing. Right now it's grayed out because we just saved it. Okay, if we go back to this image, have a look, the background is updated. So that's a great way to do it. Let's go back, press Control or Command Z or Z or whatever you, however you pronounce it. So grouping and the ability to adjust smart object in whole new documents opens up immense number of possibilities for us. Let me illustrate that for you. So here we have an image of a billboard. Let's go ahead and create a rectangle for the billboard. All right, so click on the rectangle tool right here. Okay, and let's make a rectangle which you think would be fit for the billboard. Yeah, something around that. Okay, now let's fill it with gray, 50% gray. It doesn't really matter what you fill it with, but I usually choose gray so that it kind of gives me much more idea when we replace that. It's just neutral and everything goes perfectly on that. And make sure you type in the hex code 808080 and hit OK. So it's a gray rectangle. That's all there is. Okay, let's collapse that. Now let's adjust it to the billboard. Now before we do any of this, do the rectangle, right click on the rectangle and click convert to smart object. It's going to be fun. Press Ctrl or Command T. Okay. And while you drag the points, hold the Command key or the Control key and place the points on the four corners of the billboard. Just like so. Okay, now let's zoom in and let's just place it carefully. The exact same point, just like so. Let's do it on the other side. It's very important that we stay careful. Okay, that looks pretty good. That's fine as well. Let's 
move to the fourth point and I guess this is perfect all right hit enter or return when you're ready okay to make it more realistic let's go ahead and create one more new layer take the brush make sure the foreground color is white press X to toggle between the foreground and the background and make the brush super big very big okay and just a dab make sure the opacity and flow is hundred and you have selected the soft round brush okay just dab like that it gives it a much more realistic effect to the billboard now we want the shine just on the billboard so what do we do we hold the alt key or the option key and then click on the line between these two it creates a clipping mask now this is too much let's decrease the opacity let's go for somewhere around 64 is fine now have a look at this you can replace this rectangle with anything you want. You just created a mockup. Congratulations. Now you can save this as a PSD. So I'm going to go file save. It's already saved for me. So I'm going to click on save. Now, anytime you want anything on the billboard, you can easily do it. Just double click on the thumbnail right here. Okay. And then have a look. If I replace this with any image, let's go ahead and choose something like this. This lady right there. Okay. And we're going to make her big. And we're going to create a soap advertisement. Let's hide the eyes. We don't need the eyes. We want the skin. Okay. Because this is a soap advertisement. We're going to move it, move her to the left a little bit. And let's write something. And you'll see some magic. And this is amazing. Let's write, say, let's choose the font, Babus. Bold. Let's write in P-I-X. And then let's choose light soap amazing we're gonna sell soap very soon very very soon looks pretty cool right and yeah, we can be a good soap brand now let's hold the alt or option click and drag to make a copy of it and let's write our caption or um what do you say our call to action what is the word for that our mot moto moto keep creating that has nothing to do with the soap, but I don't know. I just, you know, crazy. All right. Now let's change the font of this one to, let's say, Gilroy. It's one of my favorite fonts. Light. Okay. And then let's add some space to it. So click on this and let's add some space. Let's see 75. Yes, yeah, 75 looks good. Or let's say 100. Okay, 100 is great. Now let's collapse it. Move to press control or command D and let's just adjust it the way we want. I'm going to keep it like that. Let's stay aligned. Keep creating. Looks pretty cool. Looks awesome. And we're going to keep it just like that. Now, don't judge my typography, but it's, it's just an example. All right. Press control or command S or you can go to file and then save. Now, when we get back to that, have a look at this. Pix soap is on the billboard. Keep creating. It's awesome, isn't it? Now have a look. The perspective is maintained. The perspective of the billboard is maintained in the text and on the subject. So, because we converted it into a smart object and then we adjusted the point, it totally fits in all right. You can replace it with whatever you like and this has become your mock-up. So what we learned here is that we can use smart objects as placeholders and those placeholders can be used as mockups. By the way, to know more about mockups, watch this video right here. So this is the brand new Design Week newsletter from Pix Imperfect. This is hot, new, fresh, amazing. By the way, it's fake. I just created it for a reason. I wanted to show you a mistake that I do time and again and I don't want you to do it. Have a look at this. First of all, I have made some guides which you can make it go away by pressing Control or Command semicolon. To hide the guides, press that to show the guides again. And everything is aligned properly. And that's the thing we do in good design. Okay, so you can place smart object by dragging and dropping it. So we can place it, this JPEG, by dragging and dropping it from the finder or the explorer and hit enter. It opens up as smart object, given that you have set it in the preferences that way. So let's go ahead and delete this. If I go to preferences on a Windows, that would be edit and then preferences on a Mac, that would be Photoshop CC and then preferences. Now inside of preferences, if we go to general, have a look at this always create smart object when placing if you check it it will be created as smart object when you place it just hit okay now we can also do it the other way by going to file place embedded 
Okay, it does the exact same thing. So I'm going to just open up this JPEG and place it. Exact same thing, right? Let's resize it okay. to according to the guide. All right, so I'm going to place it right there. This is not very accurate and maybe snapping is off. But anyway, it doesn't matter. All right, this is okay. I'm happy with this. Let's make the guide go away by pressing control or command semicolon. Now, what if I want to make a sunrise or a sun tint kind of thing over there? So this is a smart object. We have learned about it. If we just double click on the thumbnail and open it up, let's go ahead and do it. Let's create a gradient and let's choose the color on the left hand side. Let's choose a yellow, something like this. On the right hand side, as it fades away, make sure the opacity at the top, make sure the opacity is zero okay, as it fades away. And the color is, let's choose a red color as it fades away. It looks pretty good. Hit OK, hit OK again and change the style from linear to radio. And we can move it anywhere we want and just hit OK and change the blend mode to something like, let's see, color dodge. This is too much, right? Let's decrease the fill. It decreases the projection. And just like a sun, it looks pretty great. All right, let's keep it that way. And we can double click on it and we can move it if we want to. So I'm going to place it right there. It looks pretty good. Hit OK. Now, if I just try to save it, if I go to File, Save, it will show you an error. It basically says that this image was a JPEG when you imported it. And JPEG files cannot have layers. So what you need to do, you need to flatten everything. You need to merge everything and then save it so that it can save as a JPEG. But we don't want that. We want the layers, we want it to be non-destructive, right? So what do we do? First of all, just hit OK, just dismiss this and then save it as a PSD separately. So we go to File, Save As and we save it as a PSD. Let's save it in the tutorial folder and I'm going to save it as Man, Sun, <laughs> crazy stuff. Just click Save, hit OK and close it, all right? OK. Now. All we need to do here is that we totally want to replace it. We don't want that JPEG as the source of the smart object. We want to replace the source. So we right click on it and choose replace contents. It's going to be here, replace contents. And we're going to go to the tutorial folder and Manson and place it. And it's going to be there. And anytime you want to adjust it, you can double click on it. You have it non-destructive. If we wanted to save that as a JPEG, that would be flattened and we won't have the ability to be able to adjust that later, right? So keep in mind that PSD is the way to go, not JPEGs when it comes to attaching smart objects. Unless of course you don't want to go in and adjust it. So if you don't need to go in and adjust the images, you don't need to do it. But otherwise, if you want to keep it totally non-destructive, this is the way to go. Put some pressure to your memory. Which option did we select? to open the smart object into our image. What was that option? File, right? And then place embedded. Focus on the word, place embedded. So all of the smart objects that we added up until now, either by dragging or dropping, or by converting it into a smart object, or by going to file, place embedded, all of them are embedded smart objects. Now there's one more kind of smart object and that is linked smart object. So there are basically two kinds, embedded and linked. So think of embedded and linked as Wi-Fi and mobile data. So you have a mobile data, right? You have your mobile data, which comes from the service provider or like whatever there is, Vodafone or, you know, Verizon or whatever, at and or whatever. So they have their own internet connection and you have it on your phone. It's your personal thing. Okay. And then you have a Wi-Fi. Now, Wi-Fi is something everybody in your house uses. It's linked. If the Wi-Fi data runs out, which is, these days it's basically unlimited, but if the Wi-Fi shuts down, it shuts down for everybody. If the Wi-Fi speed increases, it increases for everybody. But on your personal phone, 4G, if it data plan runs out, it just runs out for you. 
right? Unless you're giving a hotspot. So it's embedded. This internet connection is embedded to your phone and the Wi-Fi is linked. You can use it. Any changes to the link will change it for everybody using that Wi-Fi. Make sense? No, let me make it sense for you. By the way, this is the design of an ongoing series I'm doing on Instagram called Photoshop Shortcut of the Day. So if you're not following me on Instagram, follow right here. All right. So we want to place the Pixinperfect logo at the top. So we have it in a PSD format. So I'm going to go to my finder. I'm going to place this logo right here. Okay. Now this is embedded, which means that if I save this PSD right now, it's going to be embedded with that PSD. It's going to be with that PSD. This smart object has nothing to do with anything else, any other PSD. This is embedded. Now let's talk about linked. Let me open up another PSD. Okay. So I'm going to open up this Instagram.psd. Okay. Let's open this up. Okay. Pretty good. Now let's open it up in another tab. All right. So we have both the tabs open. And in this, I already have this, uh, added logo so i'm going to remove it okay so we don't have logo in any one of them now what if i do this what if i go to my finder and place it in any one of them okay or you can open it separately as well okay and you can just keep it right there now open up the properties let's close the finder we don't need it or minimize it this is the properties if you cannot see the properties here go to windows and then properties now inside of properties we can convert this one to linked so click on convert to linked. It's going to allow you to save it as a PSD. So pick some perfect logo one. Let's save it. Okay. Now this is linked and you can tell this by this link logo. Okay. Now, if you open that up, if you open the pick some perfect logo one, let's open this thing up here. Okay. So let's open it up in another tab and let's make this tab a little adjusted. Okay. So here we have the logo right down here. Now, if I open this one, you can also place this by going to file, place linked. Okay. And we can choose the one that we added. We on the smart object picks perfect logo one. Let's place it right there. So it's placed in the second one as well. Now have a look at this. If I want to change text or do anything here. So if I click on T and if I change anything, picks imperfect, or if I change the color to say black or blue or yellow, so let's change it to bright yellow, hit OK. And then if I just go ahead and save it, file, save. Both of them update. Amazing, isn't it? If I move it to the right, save, both of them update. Now it cuts because the canvas just ends. So we can press C and we can just extend it if you want to and it will appear again. Press Control or Command S to save it. And there you go, it appears again. So this is the magic of linked smart object. Now you could have placed the Pixinperfect logo directly as well by, let's just go back. Let's just delete everything. We didn't do any of that. Let's delete this on here. Let's go ahead and open that. Let's delete this on here and let's open this one and let's delete this here as well. I'm just moving it. Where is that thing? Okay, there it is. Okay, cool. We could have done it this way as well. We could have gone to file, place linked, and then placed Pixinperfect logo or logo one that we created later, place. I just did this because I wanted to show you, you can convert smart object from embedded to linked as well. So placed it, this one as well, file, place, linked. And then you would click this one, place. And I'm going to place it right here. Now, wait, I'm going to show you one more trick. So if you now open file, open, pick some perfect logo, PSD, let's open that up. And if you make any changes to that, let's adjust it. Okay. If you make any changes here, maybe you want to make the logo a little smaller or bigger, or maybe you want to remove the blacks from the logo. So double click on the right hand side and take the darks away of this layer, just like this and hit okay, and then save it. See, the blacks of the logo went away. So that's an amazing thing that we can do. However, what if you don't want it to be linked? Now, what if you want to change the font or the logo size only in this one, only in Insta2 and not in this one, but both are linked, right? Easy. You can convert linked to embedded as well. So let's select this one 
and then open up the properties with the smart object selected and this is the properties or you can go to windows and then properties and click on embed so it's embedded now so anytime you want to make any change if you double click on it it will open up another document and i can make any change here i want i want to convert it to light and i just want to save it file save it's not updating on that one because that one has linked and this one has embedded so if i close it and if i control or command a zero have a look it's thin again easy right so we have embedded the linked and we can also link the embedded back to the first example i want to show you something really interesting remember that we opened it up as a smart object right have a look this is a smart object from lightroom or directly into photoshop from camera raw and we can go back anytime we double click on the thumbnail and we can go back to that right now there's one thing about this we should always keep in mind the smart object will use the same source no matter how many copies you make so if you make a copy of this by pressing ctrl or command j and in that copy you want to just double click on the thumbnail and you want to say let's say decrease the exposure all right and you're doing it for the highlights maybe you'll mask in the highlights or something like that and just hit ok the problem is when it prepares the smart object see the exposure has gone down on both of them because both are using the same source so instead of going that way we can do this let's delete this right click on it whenever there's a smart object and you want the second one to be unique right click on it and select new smart object via copy so it creates a new smart object you click on that one now when you double click on it now when you go to camera raw now if you decrease the exposure hit okay as it prepares the smart object you will see the change is only made on this one i can mask in the sky do whatever you want but this can be used to your advantage as well so this is a blank image let's go ahead and put a black background so solid color black hit okay and let's type something with the type tool let's type in luxury and let's double click on it and change the font double click on the t to select it what's happening okay and then change it to extra bold and then i'm gonna make it a little bigger okay and now place it in the center now let's convert this into a smart object if you right click on it and convert to smart object this is now a smart object keep in mind you can still change the text now let's make a copy of the smart object press ctrl or command j ctrl or command t and we're gonna invert it just like this make it a little longer and this is just a reflection kind of thing and decrease the opacity to 20 percent something like that let's create a mask and inside the mask with the gradient from white to black and we're gonna make something like this and let's keep it something like that that looks pretty good let's increase the opacity 35 is good this looks amazing now what if you want to change the text keep in mind both are using the same source for the text so if we change only one of them the reflection will change as well we don't have to do the reflection separately again so if we just double click on it and type in something interesting let's double click on the t let's type in um, familiar with this <laughs> if you go to file and save say amazing right now if you want to type something longer double click on it and if you want to type something like comfort okay but it exceeds it in that case you would have to just increase the canvas size press c and then just increase it just like this hit enter or return press ctrl or command s and get back it's it will do the job as you can see it's cut out on the left and a little bit on the top we might have to go back and we might have to extend it from the top and from the left hit enter press ctrl or command s let's get back everything looks great but at this point of time you know the reflection looks a little awkward because we cut too much so let's see and do it properly press ctrl or command s now it's perfect so when you have two or more instances of the same thing in your design if you change one and all of them will change provided it's a smart object that can be advantageous if you want it to be unique you know what to do just right click on it and choose new smart object via copy but in this case we wanted it to be the same so all of these examples point to one thing 
we should always use smart objects when we can. But why when we can? Why not all the time? Here's why. When it comes to altering pixel data, smart objects just don't work. For example, you want to make a change to a particular set of pixels. You want to just stretch it or you want to burn it or you want to paint on it or you want to modify it. Smart objects just won't work. Let me illustrate this for you. Coming back to this example, if I just zoom in and if I select a particular area with the rectangular marquee tool and press Ctrl or Command T, it just doesn't do anything. Or let's say we choose the eraser tool or the smudge tool for that matter. It just won't let you do. It will show you an error. This smart object must be rasterized before proceeding. Okay. Edit contents will no longer be available. Right. So do you want to rasterize the smart object? You don't want to do it. So you cannot do any kind of pixel data alteration. For example, you want to paint on it. So let's select the paint, you know, brush tool. Microsoft Paint. Have you ever used it? I've made the brush humongously huge. And if you paint it, it will show you the same error. And if you hit OK, it will rasterize it, which means that you won't be able to change the contents of it. For example, if we hit OK, it's rasterized. If you double click on it, it just opens up the layer styles dialog box and you cannot change the text. It's gone. If you rasterize it, the non-destructive abilities go away. Keep in mind things like removing blemishes won't work with smart object. If you're doing it on the same layer, even if you're doing it on a separate layer, you're just painting. You can combine them and group them into smart object, but that just doesn't make sense. So when it comes to editing and when it comes to doing something without any alteration of pixel data, like painting or erasing, you can definitely use smart objects. Coming back to the very first question, why use a smart object? for non-destructive editing. Now, what is non-destructive editing? In all of the examples that we did, we could go back and change the properties of smart objects. And the ability to be able to change the properties later and after the fact at any point of time is called non-destructive. An image is non-destructive if you can change the properties later. So, if it was a regular raster layer, and you put the blur to 65, you cannot go back and change the blur to zero or 12 for that matter. But if that was a smart object and you applied a Gaussian blur, you can change the values later. Hence, it is non-destructive. Hope this video made sense to you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys on my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.